evening. Welcome to tonight's MOA CAC and StriveScan virtual college exploration event. Um, tonight, you'll hear a presentation from St. Mary's. If you have any questions, you can use the Q&A box and type your question in there and then the presenter will get to those questions throughout the presentation. Your camera and microphone are off as an attendee, so don't worry, you cannot be seen or heard. You can sign up for more sessions at moacac.org. There's a few more sessions this week. And then if you've missed any sessions or want to return to any sessions, the recordings are also available at moacac.org. Now I'll turn it over to our presenter. All right, well, thank you very much. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here and we'll go ahead and get started. So my name is John Cavio. I serve as the Director of Outreach Initiatives here at St. Mary's University. Um, I am alumni of the institution. I have both my bachelor's and master's um, from St. Mary's. Uh, I primarily recruit in the St. Louis area. Uh, however, I am responsible for all of Missouri as well as Illinois for the institution. So um, I'm gonna start off um, real quick here by showing a video. I'm gonna make sure to share my computer sound. Um, for those of you who might not have been to our campus or to Texas, we want to make sure that you kind of have a, a nice idea of what the institution looks like. Welcome to St. Mary's University. Welcome to our beautiful campus and welcome to a community of faculty, staff, and students who work together, have fun together, and who help each other help our students prepare for careers of outstanding leadership. St. Mary's offers a lot of different leadership opportunities, small class sizes, and with that, you're able to really connect with uh, different teachers and advisors that will really guide you along the way. People here, the professors or the faculty staff, really want you to exceed. And I didn't expect people here to put that much value on my education. And here, the whole community of St. Mary's is trying to strive to make me better felt from the first day that I was here until the last day that I graduated that I was part of something that was much bigger than just me. St. So Mary's gave me the opportunity to present at uh, professional conferences. One of the most amazing things it was having students and faculty professor coming to me and ask me if I was a master's student or a faculty professor and they were amazed when I told them that I was an undergraduate student presenting at a professional conference. When somebody's reading a resume from St. Mary's University, they know they're not just hiring somebody that's after just that position. They want the higher position. They want the managerial position and to go above and beyond that because that's what St. Mary's teaches us. St. Mary's also prepared me very well and I really felt like day one of medical school, I was already way ahead of everyone else. St. Mary's offers a lot of different opportunities to meet employers and to work outside the community. I was able to get an internship last summer with USAA as a financial analyst, where I'm working part-time now. And upon graduation, I'm going to begin there full-time. And I'm proud to have had the opportunity to attend a university that cares so much about community, about students, and really does give back in a way that, that can't be matched around the nation. Welcome to St. Mary's. I hope this is the place for you. So that's a nice um, little introduction to the institution. Uh, but like I said, if you're not familiar with us, um, we're in San Antonio, Texas. We are a four-year Catholic private liberal arts institution. We're actually the first Catholic school in the state of Texas, or I should say first Catholic university in the state of Texas, as well as the American Southwest, which is something we really pride ourselves on. We were founded in 1852 on the banks of uh, the San Antonio Riverwalk, which is now the Riverwalk. Um, we are considered what's called a Hispanic serving institution, which means we have a certain percentage of our students that are Hispanic, which makes sense since we're in the American Southwest. Our total enrollment, if you include graduate and law, is right over 3,500. At the undergraduate level, it's about 2,300. Our traditional incoming class hovers somewhere between um, 600, 650 to 550 on, on, on any given year. So a little bit about San Antonio. Um, obviously, if you're coming from Missouri, it's a little bit uh, of a hike for some people. Uh, but we traditionally will have 10 to 15 students every year from um, the Missouri region uh, join us, primarily from the greater San Luis area, but from all over the state. Um, so a little bit about uh, San Antonio. Um, it is the seventh largest city uh, in the United States. Most people don't kind of realize that. 
Um, a few things that we're known for, obviously the Riverwalk, we're a pretty big uh, tourist destination. That picture that you see on the top left there, um, obviously is the Riverwalk. It's a, a really nice event. In a typical year pre-COVID, we do have fly-in events that we do fly St. Louis to specifically because we have a large alumni association uh, down to uh, an overnight experience. And we do have dinner on the Riverwalk and take a riverboat tour. That's what those lights on the river are. Um, so you get a kind of a full experience of, of San Antonio. On the top right is just one of our kind of newer areas in town called the Pearl. It's a very popular part, not too far from campus. Um, a lot of green space, a lot of really great restaurants. My favorite restaurant in all of San Antonio is, is Southerly. If you look underneath the Pearl and to the right, um, that's my favorite restaurant in all of San Antonio. So it's a really, really great and fun place in a young city um, to be in. If you're not familiar with the Alamo, that's, the, that's the, what's on the bottom right there. Uh, we are uh, a Spurs town through and through. The best way I can describe it for somebody coming from Missouri, specifically from St. Louis, um, is how you all feel about the Cardinals is how we feel about the San Antonio Spurs. They're kind of an institution in town. We're very proud of them. Uh, and, then, and then last on the top left is uh, the Tower of Americas, which was built for the 1968 World's Fair that we had here, um, the Hemisphere that we called it um, in San Antonio. It's one of the many tourist destinations here in town. So it's a vibrant city with a lot of fun things to do. Um, you know, Six Flags and SeaWorld and uh, all sorts of things for students to partake in when they're not in class. A little bit about the institution more specifically though, um, we do, uh, well, on the relatively smaller side, we are division two. Um, and so, like I mentioned, our enrollment overall is 2,300 students. What that equates to um, for students looking about how big we actually are is an average class size of about 16. Um, the student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. Um, each of our students does have a faculty um, uh, advisor that is um, stays with them through their four years at the institution. So um, you do get a close connection with uh, the faculty with which you're working. 94% of our faculty have a terminal degree, which um, if you don't know what that means, essentially they have the highest degree that they have in their field. Typically that's a PhD, PhD, EDD, JD, um, or an MFA if it's one of our arts programs. Uh, we do have 12 um, varsity sports. It says 11 there. Uh, 11 are the more traditional um, sports, including men's and women's, men's women's basketball, men's and women's soccer, volleyball, men's and women's tennis, men's and women's um, golf, uh, softball, and baseball. But our newest and most popular one coming up is esports. Uh, we recently uh, got into an agreement with Spectrum uh, Internet, who built a, a, an arena for us. And we're actually competing with some uh, major national institutions uh, across the country, including Auburn, UT, SMU, and mainly in the South. Um, and so it's a really popular program. So some of the things that they're playing are League of Legends, Overwatch, uh, but we have uh, 12 uh, Alienware devices on our campus uh, in the, an arena specifically for students to partake in that. So um, the 11 traditional sports uh, do carry scholarship. Esports at this time does not, but there is the hope that eventually that it will. Um, but it is a really good opportunity for students to get involved on campus. Our campus um, initially started as an all-men's institution, and in the mid-60s, we uh, integrated to have both men and women. Uh, now we actually have more women than men at the institution, and by 58 to 42 percent, which is pretty indicative of the college growing rate across the country as it stands right now. Uh, and then we do have uh, 13 residence halls on campus. For anyone outside of um, our county, which is Bayer County, there is a two year live on requirement. However, for this past year, we did allow um, any students that were not from Bayer County to actually stay home. And that's including some of our students from St. Louis who decided to uh, partake in virtual learning this semester. Most of them are coming back in the spring. Uh, we are very fortunate to have a very low um, positivity rate in the city. And so many of them are deciding to come back. Um, but in a traditional year, there is a two year live on requirement. So your freshman and sophomore year, you're expected to live on campus. That said, a majority of our students live on campus all four years because of the amenities that we have and, um, and just the campus uh, vibrancy that we have. So it, and most students actually live on all four years, even some of the ones from San Antonio, many of the ones from San Antonio do, but um, it is a requirement for those first two years for anyone from outside of San Antonio. Uh, I'm gonna play another video that's gonna kind of encapsulate um, student life for you, I think, better than I can. Oh, let's do that too quickly. That's a large video, so you have to bear with me for just a minute. <laughs> but it's a cool video. I'm 
going to pause it and let it load. And I'll talk about some of the traditions that you're going to see in this video. Um, as I mentioned, we've been in San Antonio for um, just under 200 years now. So we have quite a tradition, both in the city and internationally, and nationally and internationally. Uh, and so the video will show some of the fun things that students will do on campus uh, that make life on campus it's like a really fun place. <laughs> I don't want to try to click through it. It's a, it's a pretty pretty big file, so uh, I can talk about some of this stuff. So uh, some of our traditions on, on campus, you'll see um, a couple of things that are a big name for us as an institution. Uh, one of which is uh, something called Fiesta Oyster Bank. If you're at all familiar with San Antonio, we have a one week festival in April called Fiesta. The best way I can describe it for most people who are not familiar with it is basically like Mardi Gras, but with a lot less debauchery. So across the city, they have, there's different parties every night of the week, and they're usually run by some type of nonprofit, and they're usually in support of some type of um, scholarship fund or um, some type of nonprofit cause. And so we have what's called Fiesta Oyster Bank. We're now in the 105th year of that. It started out as our actual first homecoming, and then it exploded. What you'll see is the top right is a picture from one of our stages. We have six stages over two days, um, about 70,000 people on our, on our relatively small campus and it's all run by the alumni association and all the net proceeds from that event go to a scholarship fund uh, that is in support of our students so it's a really big event on our campus very well known uh, we have nationally head headlining acts it's, it's a really big deal on our campus uh, the bottom right is also a picture of that uh, what you see is a, a chicken on a stick it's a very popular street food here specifically during uh, fiesta and specifically at st mary's it's what kind of what we're known for some other things that you'll see on our campus on the bottom middle you'll see um, our a 5k for the neighborhood uh, that typically happens every fall um, all the proceeds of which go to uh, usually a community organization uh, in our area this year it'll go to holy rosary which is the parish right next door to us that's also our marianist um, affiliated like us um, we are still going to do it this year, it's just going to be a virtual version, so everyone will run it on their own and they'll submit their, their times and scores um, online. In the middle, you'll see a, a group of our students uh, called the Marianist Leadership Program, which I'll get into in just a minute, um, but they are a scholar, it's a scholarship program that has leadership and faith kind of intertwined as, um, as an integral component of that program. Um, so they're responsible for a lot of service on our campus, which you can kind of see them doing there. Uh, on the bottom left is a picture of some of our Greek life students. We do have a vibrant Greek life on our campus. About 25% of our students are Greek. Um, so you don't necessarily have to be Greek to be on campus, but a large number are. And then the top left is a picture from one of our Welcome Week events this past year. Well, well not this year, but 2019, um, where we had a, an exotic petting zoo. So she's holding a snake. I, I did not pet the snake. I, um, I, I opted to pet the llama that they brought, so that was kind of fun. Um, but we have a lot of really fun things on campus for our students to, to stay on campus, have a good time, and, and really get to know each other and in the community. So um, here's a very brief listing of all our programs. I'm going to go into detail into a few of them, which are really known for here at the institution. Um, but what you need to know is that we basically have three undergraduate schools at the institution. The first is the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. And that houses some of our more traditional liberal arts type of degrees, history, English, um, you know, all the languages, music, theology, philosophy, those type of degrees. Then we have our Greek School of Business, and I'll get into the namesake in a, in a minute, but that's our um, AACSB accredited business school. And again, you'll find the more traditional business degrees located there on the bottom left. And on the far right, you'll find our School of Science, Engineering and Technology, which again, holds our more hard sciences, uh, biology being the most popular of them, but engineering also very popular. Um, uh, physics, um, computer science, biochemistry and the like. So that's a very brief um, look at all of the degrees in totality, but I'm going to break down into the schools here um, with the next ones. So 
We, uh, the first one I'll talk about is our Grehe School of Business. The Grehe School of Business is named after a guy named Bill Grehe. If you're ever in the South um, and you go to a Valero, um, it's a very popular gas station here in town. Um, they used to be Diamond Shamrock. But uh, anyways, he, uh, Mr. Grehe, he's an alumni, one of ours. He um, is the co-founder and former uh, longtime CEO of Valero. And in 2006, he donated $26 million to the business school. And so they named it after him. So if you want to know how much it costs to name a school after you, that's about the growing rate, at least at St. Mary's it is. Um, and so some of our more popular programs uh, are, of course, um, one that you find a lot of business schools, accounting, uh, management, marketing, uh, and most specifically, uh, finance and risk management. We have a wealth of students who go on to work at um, a, a lot of trading firms, um, brokerage firms in, in uh, New York. We have a strong connection with uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, so which is a big deal for a school of our size, which we're really proud of. Um, for, uh, as far as accounting is concerned, we have, uh, I didn't list it here, but we have something called uh, Accounting and Data Analytics, which allows you to sit for your certified public accounting exam in five years, um, which typically is not done at the undergraduate level. So again, a program that's a little bit different than you would find other places. And the biggest thing I'm going to mention is on the bottom right, you're going to see a logo that says AACSB accredited. Um, if you're not aware, AACSB is essentially the, the strongest accreditation that a business school in the United States can receive. So there's about, my understanding is about 4,000 business schools across the globe. 600 of them have an, an AACSB accreditation and then schools of our size, it's even lower number. So it's something that we're really proud of. It's a really difficult accreditation to achieve. Um, and so what I would implore you to do is that if you're not looking necessarily, oh, that's a marriage, which is totally fine but you are looking specifically for business schools or business degrees, I really want you to look for that logo because that's gonna be the rubber stamp of approval for a degree program that's gonna be top notch. Um, a couple of the pictures that you'll see here on the bottom is actually a student from St. Louis. Um, he, uh, he went to Vianney uh, in St. Louis, so he's one of the students that was given, uh, but he's in our, our trading room, so you can see um, all the indices in the back there. We do have a premier scholarship program that I'll get to in a second called the Greehe Scholars Program, which is a full tuition um, scholarship program, which is one of the few that we actually have on campus. Um, and the top left picture is uh, part of that program. They take typically two to three trips per year on site visits across the country to different corporations. Uh, last year they went to Google, so that's part of the cohort that got to go. Um, we have a few of them that work there, and so they were able to tour the campus, get to meet with some executives, which is really cool. Uh, and then on the far right, we have top right, we have Business Week, which is coming up for us uh, pretty soon, uh, where we have um, various leaders from different Fortune 500 companies come and speak to our business students uh, over the course of three days in October. And so we've had the CFO from American Airlines, um, obviously Valero is a big uh, part of ours. Um, we've had the um, CMO from uh, the Texas Rangers um, baseball organization there. So we, we have a lot of top um, level executives that will come down for the event in order to speak to our students. Uh, our next degree programs, <coughs> excuse me, are within our College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. Our most popular majors in our in that school uh, include political science. Uh, we do have a law school, and I'll get into the special program we have there. Uh, criminal justice, exercise and sports science, forensic science, which we're the only program um, in our area that has a forensic science program, um, as well as psychology. So, a couple of cool pictures I want to get into here on the top left. I mentioned earlier that we are uh, we work with Sea World. Uh, we have a, a special um, cohort every year that will go uh, and do uh, research with a beluga whale pod, which is what you see right there, beluga whale. Dr. Hill, who's on the far right, who's kind of facing towards um, the beluga whale, she does research uh, on the pod. Um, specifically, if you're not aware, a beluga whale pod operates very much like a family unit, and so um, she gets to do, take some of her students every year for research for that, which is a really competitive program, but really awesome. Um, and even if you're not looking at marine biology or you're just looking at psychology, it's a really, really cool program. On the far right, you'll see the uh, Washington semester. We have an agreement with uh, American University that students will do uh, an internship on the Hill. And so typically they'll do six hours of internship, which means they're working on the Hill well, with one of our Congress uh, people, usually from their home district. And then uh, they'll take uh, two classes, so it'll be 12 hours. Uh, and then on our art studio, we have a very vibrant art program. And you can see a picture of that there. Our School of Science, Engineering, and Technology, like I mentioned, um, is where most of our hard sciences live. The most popular of which is biology, specifically with the pre-med track. Um, 
that's our number one major on campus. Most people who know us associate us with our law school, but it's actually at the undergraduate level, it's biology that's our most popular major. And this is a, a, a very specific reason for that. It's, it's a very strong program. Uh, so last year, and this is about a five-year average, around hovers around the same, 79% of our students that applied to medical school were admitted. Um, the national average hovers closer to 30%, and in the state of Texas, at least, it's closer to 25%. So it's something that we're really proud of. Um, now, I will be honest with you, not every student that starts biology, not only here, but anywhere, is not necessarily going to finish in biology, but the ones who do have a very strong track record of success going into medical school. Going to dental school, actually, last year was 100%. That's a little bit of a low statistic because only three of them applied and three of them got in. So but it's always hovers around that. Uh, same thing with um, pharmacy, with our uh, pre-nursing program and with our pre-veterinary program. They all have very strong uh, records of success in terms of entry into those programs. Uh, mechanical engineering is our next biggest major. It's actually our, one of our newest majors in that um, school. Uh, we recently received our ABET accreditation. So all of our engineering programs are ABET accredited. Just like I mentioned with the business school, if you're looking for an engineering program, it's very, very important that you look for that little red logo there on the bottom. Wherever you're looking to do an engineering program, it really should be ABET accredited. There's, I've heard, uh, my understanding is there's stories out there that engineering firms won't even hire you if you're not from one of those firms. And then graduate schools also won't let you get you if you don't have a degree from an ABET accredited program. Uh, so it's something, again, we really hang our hat on in terms of the, the quality of education that you're going to receive as you come into a place like St. Mary's. Um, yeah, so our pre-health programs, I mentioned, we do have a couple of early admittance programs. One of the ones that's most popular for our Missouri students is we do have, um, we do work with St. Louis University School of Medicine. One of our uh, Marianist priests here on campus worked as the uh, chaplain for the School of Medicine at uh, St. Louis University for 25 years. So he had a long connection and wanted to see more students going back to be able to go to med school there. And so we have an early admittance program with them. We're one of the few that, that actually work with them on that. Uh, the same is true for Baylor College of Medicine. We recently went to an agreement this past year for an early admittance program. Uh, only us and Rice University have that early admittance agreement with them. So I say all those things because it gives you an, a, a sense of um, the type of caliber of student that we expect, especially in the biology area, to hopefully go on and do great things. One of my favorite examples of, of, of um, kind of an alumni success story is Dr. Paul Sines. He's actually the Spurs team doctor. Um, and he's an alumni of ours. And actually all the physicians in his sports medicine group are also St. Mary's alumni. So we do have a, a number of alumni in the St. Louis area specifically that went to uh, undergrad at St. Mary's and medical school, either at well, um, SLU um, or, or somewhere else in Missouri. Uh, one of which um, is actually the, uh, the founder of the Clayton Sleep Institute. So we're, we're very proud of our alumni. Uh, I did mention we have a school of law. Obviously, you do have to have a four-year degree in order to apply for law school, but I wanted to mention this specifically because we do have an early law admins program um, that allows you to do three years of undergrad and then three years of law school and, and achieve both of those. So typically, you have to have four years, you apply, and then do three years of law school. But the way our program works is that um, if you um, have a certain GPA, which are listed right there, and a certain LSAT score after your freshman or sophomore years, then what happens is you save all of your elective credit for your senior year, and that, that uh, senior year serves as your first year of law school. And so that first year of law school will actually count for both degrees. So you finish everything in six years instead of seven years, um, which obviously uh, represents a pretty significant time and cost savings. Um, we've, our law school is kind of what we're most known for. Uh, some notable alumni out of that institution, more specifically that you might be aware of, is uh, Senator John Cornyn of the state of Texas. He's the second ranking um, Republican senator in the state, or in the United States Senate. Um, we do have a very long uh, track record of uh, civil service out of the law school. We've had over 850 elected officials come out of um, the same as School of Law. So um, it is uh, a pretty fantastic program. Um, it recently started, it's named after Nelson Wolf. Nelson Wolf is a Bayer County Commissioner, which is the, the county we lived in. He was also the former mayor of San Antonio, and he has both his undergraduate and law degrees. So he helped subsidize that program for students to be able to do um, the six years instead of seven. So, you know, a lot of people ask, okay, so I get this degree, now what, right? Uh, well, here's what. <laughs> we have a listing uh, of a number of schools, graduate schools that, that students are going on to, as well as major corporations um, that people are going to. So a couple that I'll mention because I think they're really notable. 
one the first one is kind of in the middle standard and poor's if you're not familiar with standard and poor's it's one of the top trading houses in the entire world not just the united states uh, we have two students have gone who got on to work on that because of their connection with our dean of student our dean of, of the business school and if you're familiar at all with them they typically will only recruit from ivy league type institutions and we've heard nothing but really great success from what they're able to accomplish um, so that's something again we're very proud of um, you'll see some I see a lot of different schools I, I'll mention Texas Tech only because I am I'm an alumni of St. Mary's but I'm currently getting my doctorate from Texas Tech so I'm I'm one of these outcomes here uh, but as you can mention as you can see we have all the big four of the accounting firms on there and a bunch of um, national corporations from all across the United States so um, if you look at rankings and you ever see St. Mary's it's typically going to say something about value or about outcomes and because of the way we do our scholarship structure and because of the value that we place on education, students typically will have higher medium incomes to be a higher, they give back to the institution at a higher rate. And I only mention that because what that really translates to is that they're happy with the education that they received while they are in St. Mary's. So getting down to brass tacks in terms of applying, uh, we have three main ways that you can apply to St. Mary's. The first is online through our, our website. Um, I will start off by mentioning that all of our application uh, modules are free um, for the entire cycle. So um, there's never a cost to apply to St. Mary's. Uh, additionally, we're on a rolling admission institution, and so there's no hard deadline, although we do have a priority scholarship deadline of December 15th. I mention that because when we're awarding scholarships, um, depending upon the size of the applicant pool is how much money we can typically award. Usually, December, well, not usually, for sure December 15th, we guarantee that certain amounts that we're going to give, uh, which range between, anywhere between $10,000 and $26,000 a year. Um, but after that, depending upon the class size and how much we can actually award. So I definitely encourage you to apply, not only to St. Mary's, but any school you're applying to before the December 15th um, kind of time, really before December 1st, in my opinion. Um, but like I mentioned, you can apply online on our website. You can also apply, if you're thinking of coming down to Texas, and you know you really want to just apply to Texas schools, we do have, it's, it's similar to what would be the Common App, but just for the state of Texas, most of the schools in Texas are located on that. So you can submit the one application and you can send it to, to various um, schools in Texas. And then we're also on the Coalition App. Um, some of your, your college counselors um, might be aware of that platform, um, but essentially their goal is to ensure access for students of all uh, backgrounds. Um, so we are on those three platforms. Typically what we will require um, would be your application, your test scores, and uh, your high school transcript. However, this year because of COVID-19, uh, we are going test optional. So if you either have not gotten a chance to test or you didn't like the test scores, which is totally fine, you can decide to apply test optional. On all of those platforms, you just have to make sure to select that. Um, and, and we can make sure to review what your your application and your scholarship without test scores. Um, now, what I would recommend, whatever you decide to do, in terms of test optional or not, is to submit optional materials. So I mentioned those are the only things that are required, specifically the transcript and your application and test scores if you want them included. Uh, but we also recommend uh, you can submit a personal statement, which is an open forum. You can uh, submit letters of recommendation, which especially if you're doing test optional, will obviously strengthen your, your application. Uh, a resume is required, let me, let me backtrack, a resume is required for the test optional and on all of our platforms, you'll have a test, uh, a resume builder. Um, although if you already have one built and you want to include that, then you can sidestep all that. So I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it even if you do with test scores, but it is required if you are a test optional applicant so that way we can get a more holistic sense of who you are as a student and a person. Um, and then you can submit any other additional writing samples that you think would be beneficial for us to understand who you are as an applicant and what type of strengths you might bring to um, St. Mary's and to your academic career. So we do have a couple of um, uh, specialty scholarship programs that I want to mention. Um, and actually there's one here that I forgot to add this slide. Um, and this is a couple of my fault. <laughs> we do have something called the St. Louis Scholars Award. And so um, if you're not aware, St. Mary's is a Marianist Catholic institution, and the Society of Mary for the United States, the, the province is headquartered in St. Louis. So we have typically have a very strong group from the St. Louis area. We have about 500 active alumni in uh, the St. Louis area, and 
we had a lot of students come from St. Louis in the 60s and 70s and 80s, and then they kind of started to drop off. And so some of the alumni who had gone back, most of the alumni who had gone back, um, wanted to change what that looked like. And so they helped in Dallas Scholarship, that they call the St. Louis Scholarship, or the St. Louis Scholars Award. So any student specifically from the greater St. Louis area is uh, awarded a 5,000 um, scholarship, $5,000 annual scholarship that's stacked upon whatever their merit award was from us. Um, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so like I said, typically we have 10 to 12 students that usually come from the area, mostly from the Catholic schools, um, but we do have more and more from some of uh, the public schools as well, which is pretty exciting. Um, so I wanna mention that, that scholarship typically used to be, uh, there used to be an application for that. Uh, this year we have decided to automatically grant it to students from that area. So the St. Louis alumni are all in to try to get more St. Louis students to St. Mary's because um, they had such a great experience. But some of the other programs that are available to all students, so the Grigi Scholars Program, I mentioned we, that's in the Grigi School of Business. You do have to be a business major to apply for that. Um, it is a very competitive scholarship. Um, typically, the a minimum uh, GPA is a 3.5 to apply, uh, or to be invited to apply, and a 27 ACT, um, and that's just to apply. Now, if you decide to apply test optional, we are working through how that will work. But if you do apply with your test and you meet those minimum requirements, you'll be invited to apply. The application includes um, a, a video about yourself as well as an hopefully an in-person, if not virtual interview <coughs> with our faculty students and some prominent alumni um, that build out that cohort. Uh, another business program we have, and that's a full tuition and um, your books, as well as um, a travel stipend for international travel or um, for um, internship opportunities. The Dean Scholars Program, is another business school program. It's not a traditional scholarship in that it goes to your tuition. It actually helps pay for extracurricular activities. You get a $5,000 uh, fund that you can use to either study abroad or um, if you wanted to take an unpaid internship, you can use that as your payment for that time. Our honors program uh, is uh, another competitive program. Typically, the GPA requirement is a 3.75 um, GPA. This is weighted on weighted, uh, I should have mentioned and a, uh, also a 27 ACT. Um, typically there's a scholarship. Uh, we don't know the amount that that's gonna be this year. Typically it's $2,000 additional on top of whatever your merit award is. And we usually have about 40 students that'll get into that. And from M Missouri, we will typically have two or three students that will, will participate in that. We do have Army ROTC on our uh, campus. Uh, we actually have the third oldest Army ROTC unit in the country, something we're very proud of. Um, if you've ever been to San Antonio, we were called Military City USA. Um, so as soon as you walk down into the airport, you'll see that. Um, and we have a really strong um, program. We do have an agreement with one of our other institutions in town, University of Texas in San Antonio, UTSA. Uh, they have an Air Force unit. So if you're looking to do Air Force ROTC, then you can do your Air Force classes with them and then still come here. And the Air Force will still pay for that. And the Army will still pay for it. And I should mention there is a service requirement attached to that. Um, but obviously, if it's something that you're looking to do, then it's a really great opportunity that I encourage any student that might be interested in exploring that to do so. We do have a really vibrant music program and uh, all of our music uh, majors typically will have an additional music scholarship on top of what other merit scholarship was. Um, and that can range anywhere from uh, usually five to $8,000 a year on top of your merit award. Um, so if you're a strong student and you're a music student and you're from St. Louis, we're probably gonna pay your tuition to be completely honest with you. <coughs> but if you wanna participate in music but not be a major, you can absolutely do that. We do have uh, various ensembles, the Rattler Athletic Band um, that you can also participate in. And there is scholarship available to non-majors and non-majors as well. Our Marianas Leadership Program is a program I mentioned earlier. It's a leadership program that's really faith-based. Um, kind of in the Marianas uh, charism. You do not have to be Catholic to be part of that, but typically uh, most of our students are uh, that participate in that program. But they are basically the face of the Marianas at the student level, and they really lead a lot of the community service that, <coughs> excuse me, our institution is known for. And so, you know, if you really are into community service, um, and you kind of want to develop more as a leader and in, and in your own your faith journey, I really recommend that um, you consider that program. There is a $3,500 scholarship annually, that is um, awarded to students on top of that. Uh, this past year, we had two students from St. Louis, one from St. Mary's and one from Rosati um, that are in that program this year. Our alumni scholarship, I mentioned <coughs> Fiesta Oyster Bake. 
we'll typically will net about a million dollars a year in revenue. And so that money goes to an endowment, and then endowment pays for about 70 students, usually five to ten thousand dollars scholarship annually on top of the merit award uh, for them to attend St. Mary's. Um, so we're really fortunate to have their support. And then last but not least, our athletic scholarships. I mentioned there's 11 uh, Division II sports that we have. Um, most of our students are going to be on full tuition if they're part of the team, but it just depends upon the needs of the team, right? If we have a soccer team and we have three great strikers, but you know, you're a striker, then it, it could get a little uh, hairy. So it just depends on the, the, the needs of the team at the time, and then obviously your own skill level. But if you're interested in that, you can definitely follow up with me and I can um, connect you with the coaches. And we, we do have a few athletes from the Missouri area, specifically in, in basketball. Uh, so FinAid, uh, financial assistance, I won't go into too much. Um, it, it's obviously going to be pretty standard across the country. However, a few things I'll mention. Um, if you don't know, the FAFSA is open. I encourage you to apply for that. Regardless of where you might fa fall financially, I recommend all students uh, apply for that. The priority scholarship, or priority deadline to finish that is May for, uh, March 1st, but we do encourage it to do as, as soon as possible. If you were to apply now, and get admitted and then also have your fin aid um, done with us, then we are getting our financial aid packages before Christmas time. We want students to have as much time as possible to make the best decision possible for them. It's really important for us as an institution that you're making a, a, a wise financial choice. Um, and like I mentioned on, on there at the bottom, the letters start going out as early as December 1st. Uh, so a few ways to connect with us. We, uh, we do offer live virtual guided tours. Uh, and it's not mentioned on here, but we recently opened our campus tours again um, at a very limited basis. Uh, we have three families a day, one family a tour. Um, so if you're looking to potentially visit San Antonio, um, you can contact me. I'm actually in charge of the whole visit program. But, um, but if you're not really ready to travel yet, which I totally would understand, uh, we do have live gathered campus tours. And so we have a pretty robust virtual tour on campus, but we actually have one of our student tour guys lead through that presentation, um, through, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there, through that presentation, and we actually have one of our student tour guys that participates and can answer all your questions. Um, we do have some academic sessions that'll be posted here in the next week. Um, so if you're interested in any of the programs that I mentioned, most of them will have their own information sessions where you can meet our deans, or you can meet our faculty, you can meet current students, and start to get connected with them and learn more about um, those programs specifically. And then we do offer phone and video chats for any students that might want to know more about their financial aid package or meet with a faculty member. Um, and you can register for all that on our website. That QR code at the very top um, is an active QR code. So if you want to go to that, it'll take us to take the website so you know um, where to go. And, and this is our staff. And that's me in the back. I'm not a fan of this picture, but they post this anyways. Uh, but this is our staff. This is pre-COVID. So you know, we're being smart and socially distant now. Uh, but we have a really fantastic staff who's here to help you, ready to, and excited to hopefully have you join us in the fall. Um, and that's all of our contact information. Um, like I said, my name is John, and I, I have a unique role in that. Uh, I'm actually the director of, uh, of outreach for the institution, and I, uh, the only area that I oversee for recruitment is actually the, the Greater St. Louis, and, and then also including, like I said, Illinois and Missouri. Um, so, you know, we don't typically have a ton of students that apply. So you get really one-on-one -on -one attention with me. Um, I also work with you through the scholarship program to make sure that um, you're getting everything that you need and you have a resource for all four years. And me as an alumni um, and uh, as an admissions counselor for you. So um, that's our contact information. Uh, that's all the information that I have for you tonight. I, I appreciate you joining us or joining me this evening. And um, I hope everybody out there stays safe. Um, I know it's a crazy time of year. And um, I really appreciate you uh, watching with me.
that concludes our presentation tonight. After this ends, there will be a quick survey with four questions for you to complete. And again, if you'd like to sign up for any sessions or see any recordings, moacac.org is your site. Have a great night.